Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, tonight we start a new series. Did you guys all get your cuties? You did? All of, all of you have it? And if you don't have it, can you raise your hand? If you don't have it, there's a few hands if you guys help me. Because at some point in our message, if it gets to, like too, too hard for you, just, just start eating. <laughs> start eating. So it gives you like, okay, you know, like you're at the movies, you're doing something. And so the new series that uh, I'm starting is called Vitamin C. Vitamin C is because this is what we need. If we are going to overcome, if we're going to live victorious, if we're going to accomplish and advance the kingdom of God, we need courage, character, and commitment. And I'm going to tell you that these three things, it's almost like they're almost like bittersweet because they're not easy. It's not easy to be courageous. That means that you're able to confront any situation. You're able to confront life for when it comes and life is not fair. But you're able to confront it with courage because we have, courage is not something that we just have. There is a name for our courage. It's his name is Jesus. And I know that we've been speaking. I feel like I need to go into this uh, series and, and, you know, we might not get too far tonight, but but I feel like we have started the year in a, in a, we're in a good, we're in a good place. I feel that we, you have gotten every word. We have been going on thinkers, and I think we're still going on thinkers, right? Okay, so there is all these things, all these tools that are being given to us. And now it's time for us to take what belongs to us. It's time for us to go after it and stop waiting. And so I am going to start tonight with character. Tonight I'm going to talk about character. I'm going to tell you a few. Let, let me pray. Let me pray. I want to pray before we start. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that, first of all, but that we are reminded that you love us. You love us. That this message is not a, a message of heart, hardness or, or harshness for our hearts. It's not a heavy message. But I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will come and you will speak to us. And it's your love, it is your love that brings us to conviction. So I thank you that in this house, there's great conviction. Because it is your conviction that brings us to repentance. It is the conviction that makes us want to change and desire and will it to change. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit, and we say, have your way. Well, I'm going to give you a few quotes about, about character. D.L. Moody said, Character is what a man is in the dark. Character is what a man is in the dark. William, Her William Hershey Davis says, reputation is what men says about you on your tombstone. Character is what the angels say about you before the throne of God. And there's one that I love. Thomas B. Macaulay said, the measure of a man's real character is what he would do if he would never be found out. Are you hearing this? Character, I think we confuse character. We, I think we confuse character with reputation. I'm not saying that reputation doesn't matter. That's not what I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying that reputation is part of it. But character is what God is interested in. Because I think many times, um, and I'm going to go into different, different uh, people in the Bible. I think we're going to study Joshua. We're going to study um, uh, King Saul. We're going to study uh, King David. We're going to study Joseph. And we're going to be able to see who of them. And, and these three things, courage, character, and commitment, that's not something that we choose. It's, it's, this, is like, this is like a formula. Courage plus character plus commitment equals to a son and daughter of God. It's not one is better than the other. They're all equal, and we need all three. And so I'm going to talk about this, guys, and we're going to dissect their lives. And I believe, like my husband said, their stories is in the Bible so we can learn. 
Because we have been called to be disciples, and a disciple is not just someone who preaches the gospel. A disciple is someone who is a learner. A disciple is someone who's constantly searching for the things of God, constantly pursuing the things of God. And um, see, because there's time, uh, I'm going to give you homework. And your homework is to, to read 1 Timothy 3. Go from 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7, that's your homework. And if you read that, he is, Paul is teaching Timothy. I love Timothy. He was always so afraid. I'm like, I, I, I relate to Timothy. Because God asked us to do something, and he was always so reluctant. He didn't know if he wanted to do it. And so, so God sends this man, which is the Apostle Paul, and he's telling him, this is what is required. So if you read it, those are requirements for us to be in ministry. And I think when you read it, you, you read it, and I used to read it, I'm like, well, that doesn't pertain to me. I haven't been a, a pastor my whole life. So when I read it, I'm like, I'm not an overseer. I'm not a deacon. Yeah, I'm not, I don't want to be a leader. So that doesn't partake me. Does it, this has nothing to do with me. That's for people that are in ministry. Yes, that's for people who are in ministry. But do you know that God has called you into the ministry, whether you work for a church or, or you're a pastor or you're an evangelist, a missionary, an apostle, a prophet. Do you know that God has given you a ministry? All of us here, you have a ministry that God has entrusted you. And I want us to read that. And this ministry is called the Ministry of Reconciliation. It's in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 19. And it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ. Are you in Christ? So is anyone who is in Christ. He or she is a new creation. A new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave you what? That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. He has committed to us. He says he, he's done. Jesus left and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And he's praying for us. You need to know that we are loved. That we are actually, we have an intercessor. And his intercessor is Jesus. And he is actually praying for us that our faith will not fail. But that we will be strong and we will fight. And we will advance the kingdom of God. So you need to know. And we know that, right? So, But I want you to know. So you, you continue to hear it. Hear God love. God loves me. Okay, think about love. Everything I'm going to say, think about love. I was like, Lord, can you give me a better message? He says, no, are you going to do what I want or are you going to do what you want? So I believe that this message is for our church, for his church. So, so you have a ministry. And you have a ministry of reconciliation. But I'm going to talk a little bit about Paul. And he's telling, he's telling actually... Um, Timothy, he says, I'm going to give you, uh, and if you read it, I broke it down. I'm going to give you, these are the qualifications. He says, blameless. That means that you and I ha have to live above reproach. Like when people blame us or when people we live in constantly, we're being re reproached, we bring be bringing shame to the gospel. Do you know that we are actually, that actually is representing who Jesus is and that who you are? He says, I want you to be blameless. As you are living on this earth and as you continue to represent me, I want you to be blameless. That is one of the qualifications. A husband of one wife or a wife of one husband. Temperate. Sober-minded. Number five, good behavior. Six, hospitable. I'm like, do I have to be hospitable? Able to teach. Not given to wine. Not violent. What do you mean? I can't be fighting? No. Not greedy for money. Gentle. Not quarrelsome. Not covetousness. One who rules his house well. Not a novice. He can't be new. And he says the last one, and have a good testimony. But if you read those, it's 16. I counted them. If you find more because it's your homework, then let me know. It could be 17. But I broke them down. And out of those 16 requirements, 
14 deal with character. 14 deal with character. One deals with gifting. You know which one is the gifting? Teach. Gifting is, it says he or she needs to be able to teach. That's a gifting. That's a gift that God has given us. Like if you're a great teacher, you know, sometimes we feel great because people tell us you do awesome. And, 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 and when I'm talking about character, it's mean, it doesn't mean like we are, oh, my God, you're such, such a godly man or such a godly woman that when people tell you, you know, you're doing such, good, such a good job and you're like, oh, it's him. Have you met those people? Because they have such godly characters. You preach so good. The praise goes to him. You sing so well. The praise goes to him. Of course it goes to him. Of course it does. That was awesome. No, it was Jesus. They said, I, I, so many people tell me, it was Jesus. No, it was you. Because if it was Jesus, this is not good. But if it's you, that's good. Because Jesus is in you. Do you understand that? Sometimes we think that that's having character. No, I, I have to be, I have to, I have to guard myself. I have to do this. No, I'm not talking about that character. I'm talking about what happens in the dark. What happens when no one sees you? What happens when you're in your house? What happens when the door is closed? What happens even if you're not saying anything? What happens here? That's the character. And, 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 and I'm not saying, again, reputation... I'm going to read it because I'm not saying who cares about, you know, sometimes we say, who cares what people say? No, we should care. We should care. We're not here to please people, but we should care because I don't represent myself. I don't live for myself. I, you know, the scripture says it's Christ is in you. You're a new creation. You represent me. I love you. You're know, on this earth with the Holy Spirit. I want you to advance the kingdom. I want you to reconcile people. I want you to tell them that I love you. And, but you don't represent yourself. So if people talk about you, they're actually talking about Jesus. Right? I mean, I grew up and I hated Christians with a passion. Anyone who represented Christ, I hated them. I hated them because I used to think they're hypocrites. Yeah, they're all covered. But all they do is point the finger like... I remember uh, going to a church before I became, I, I gave my life to Christ. And, and I never forget it because I decided, you know, I wanted, you know, when you're looking, you're desperate. You want some hope. And you're like, you have tried everything. You have tried drinking. You have tried killing yourself. And this is my story. You have tried everything and nothing works. So you're like, maybe, just maybe God is real. But I remember being so desperate. So desperate. Even before I came to the Lord, and I went into a church, and I remember I even, I even wore dresses, and it was long, and I don't even like dresses. And in those times, I was a type of person that I was always very conscious of my body, so I was always very modest. But if you had a good body as a woman, I would tell you, oh, you look good, you should flaunt it. That was my belief. But I thought, you know, I'm going to go to a church, so I need to... I, I, know, I know respect, I know honor, so I'm going to wear something long. And I remember going into this church, and, and they didn't even look at me. They didn't even look at me because I had makeup. They didn't even look at me because I didn't, I didn't show any signs of Christianity. Christianity was a name given to us. Jesus didn't call you a Christian. No, people call them Christians because they look and sounded like Jesus. That's what we're called Christians. It wasn't just like, oh, it was a cute name. No, it was actually a name given after the persecution, that they were being persecuted, they were being killed, and they were able to say, you know, that's a, that's a Christian. It's a little Christ. She or he acts like him. He or she believes just like him. But I remember just going, and no one even said hi to me. And I got out of there thinking, they just validated my point that all Christians suck. That's what I thought. Why? Because they're not looking. Our ministry on this earth is to advance the kingdom of God. Our ministry on this earth is to reconcile those who are lost, whether they were brothers and sisters at one point serving God or people that never knew about God. Our job is to reconcile with people. 
Maybe they're not going to reconcile with me, but I need to reconcile with God. God is interested, but sometimes, you know, sometimes, did I read you that first Timothy 3, 7? Or did I just tell you to go there? You guys are not listening to me. You guys are so good. It is your homework, but I just want to read the numbers, uh, verse 7 to you. In two translations, says, moreover, we must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into what? In the snare of the devil. See, when we bring reproach, reproach to heaven, to Jesus, oh, the devil is so there. That's what he's waiting for. He wants us to reproach the name of Jesus. He wants it. He wants us, he wants to lure us so people can talk about our lives and how we live it because that's an entrance into our lives. That's when he wants to come and he wants to steal what God has given us. And, and he, if he can, he will take our destiny from us. But praise God that we have the blood of Jesus and he cannot. Because God has given us a great weapon and it's called repentance. At any point we can change our minds. At any point we can change. The Amplified reads the same verse. He says, we must have a good reputation. Okay, that's the testimony that we're talking about. And be well thought of by those outside the church. Not just inside the church, because sometimes we have a face for the church, right? Right? Oh, that's the church face. Mm, brother, sister. May the Lord be with you. You go outside, and you're flipping everybody. And then your face is all like, <laughs> bring it. What? That's not my seat. I want to talk to your manager. And at the end, may I give you an elevate card? <laughs> Don't give elevate cards if you misbehave. <laughs> give somebody else's card. Or make one for you. I represent myself. <laughs> but it's true. But we think that we are so good in our character. I read you the 17 or 16, right, qualifications. I said there, oh, there's only one about gifting. And I think we as a church, and I'm not just talking about Elevate, as a church in all over the world, we have flip-flopped it. And we have made it all about gifting. It's all about gifting. How well you preach. How well you speak. I mean, that's good and dandy. You should. But if you read it, and if you get more, then send me a message on Facebook. But 14 out of those, 16, it's character. So that is showing us the heart of God. Yes, if you're going to be in ministry, please, I am calling you and I'm going to gift you. Because God knows that that was, that, he gave us that. He gave us uh, the gifting. Do you know that he even given us, has given us his anointing? That's when he comes and he dwells inside of us. When he calls us, if you are called in your workplace, you're going to be anointed because that's where you are advancing the kingdom of heaven. That's where the anointing will come. Because that's what you're there for, to advance and to reconcile people. So God will come and dwell in us and the spirit of God will come and, and, and make you strong to be able to share. And then I'm going to talk about this guy in the Bible that, you know, he has a bad, he did only have a bad reputation. And I'm going to tell you something, reputation is good, but reputation, you don't have to worry about your reputation if your character is well. You can because you got to say, you know what, I, I have done nothing in the dark, right? Because the, the a character of a real man or a real woman is what he or she would do if it's never will be found out. So, but if we are developing our character, now when you know that a, a character is not developed over a year, it's a lifetime process. So it's like, oh, it's such a great character. No, until you go to be before Jesus, before the Father, then that's when you're done working with your character. Because God is interested in the character of God, not our own character, right? So there is this guy in the Bible that I want to talk to you because he has not only such a bad reputation, he has a bad reputation with the ladies. Who do you think it is? Who? 
You guys don't read the Bible, huh? <laughs> Who had, we always say, it was because of this woman that he went down. There you go. May I tell you that it wasn't a woman that brought him down? It's easy to blame, right? Oh, it's because it was a woman. She was a Philistine. Yeah, she was part of it. No, he destroyed himself, ruined himself for lack of character. I'm going to call him Sammy. You know, just, it's, you know, so we don't feel the, the punch. Let's talk about Sammy. And I believe that many times we don't know, but we are living just like Sammy. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. And I'm going to give you another, another homework. You're like, you do a lot of homework. Yeah, but you don't do it, so don't worry. <laughs> Three weeks ago, I was like, who's going to be with me? Like all of you guys, were, you know, got up and then seven people, Pastor, I'm doing my homework. I'm like, thank you. Thank you, seven people. With seven, we can change the world. With one, we can change the world, right? So let me tell you about Sammy. Okay, it's in Judges. You can read his stories. It starts in Judges chapter uh, 13 to chapter 16. He only has four little chapters. Four little chapters. And I read those chapters today over and over and over and over. And you know that I found a pattern in him? I thought that's his little line. His little line. He's like from beginning, his birth to his death. And I love because some of the Bible gives you titles, right? He gives you titles. Like, I mean, the Bible is when they wrote it, they didn't give you titles. We gave them titles. So I'm going to read you some of the titles that he has. I, I don't know if which I was reading, which version I was reading because I read it in all of them. Four chapters. First one is his birth. And then he gives us uh, the second account is his marriage. His vengeance to the Philistines. Samson and Delilah. Infamous. That's all we talk about. And his death. But let me tell you who Samson was. Samson didn't lack any courage. He didn't. I mean, you read, he was a crazy dude. I mean, crazy. He was like, he was chosen. I mean, think about it. He was, he was, he was brought forth from this parents, uh, a dad that I think they were old already. I don't know how old they were, but the mom was barren. She couldn't bear children. And then all of a sudden, God Israelites again for 40 years. Remember, for 40 years. Think about this. Courage will get you into your promised land, but character will keep you in your promised land. It will allow you to hold your goods. So... When I talk to Ke about courage, I'm going to talk about, about Joshi. I'm changing names. Joshi, Joshua, you know. He entered the promised land. He kept it. While he was alive, he kept it. But then he dies. And then it says, you start reading his, you start reading Judges. He says, now 40 years we're, we're again in bondage. The Israelites again, yet again, they needed another deliverance. It's like they forgot. You know what they forgot? Their vitamin C. They forgot to be courageous. They forgot to, they needed to develop character. They forgot that they needed the commitment. That you don't quit. That you don't turn back when it gets ugly. So, so there is this guy and he is chosen by God. He, I mean, he was just, he, he gave them, it's like a, a gift from the father. And he did, comes to the parents and says, you know, I'm going to give you a son. Israel has been crying out for 40 years because of their disobedience again. He says, but I'm going to birth a son and whatever, you're going to birth a son, and, and he's going to be a Nazarite. A Nazarite means consecrated, set apart for ministry. What does that sound like? You and me. When we come to Jesus, he says that we are his holy people, consecrated. He says, first, we were from this kingdom. This is what Peter says, before you were in this kingdom, now you're in this kingdom. Now you are my holy priesthood. You are set apart so you can show the light into great darkness. That's our calling. Well, Sammy had the same call. He was to be set apart. He was to be consecrated for the service of God. And his strength didn't, it wasn't just for him. And when I picture Sammy, I picture Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Right? 
I mean, come on, this dude can do some damage. He was strong. I mean, he killed the lion. He killed a thousand men. Read the story. He, a thousand men with the jaw of a donkey, I think. He just, he was nothing compared to our superheroes on Marvel. Not even compared to Thor. His hammer was nothing compared to the Job, right? He would probably win like a boomerang. Like, a thousand people. A thousand people. And his calling was to deliver Israel from the Philistines. And at the end, he actually entered into bondage with them. So if you're a Nazarite, you need to be set apart, right? He was greatly gifted, anointed by God. If you read it, praise God, do you know that we have the Holy Spirit? Do you know that any point when God asks us to do something, and, and then again, I'm going to be repetitive, we are to reconcile people to Jesus, to, to our Father. We are to advance the kingdom of God. So the presence of God, the anointing of God dwells inside of us. We don't have moments. He dwells inside of us. But Samson, he, has, he had moments. In strength, he became like this whole combined with Thor, you know? Because he, his strength was, I don't know, double, triple. And he would do things that were supernatural. He would kill all these people. He would grab, I don't know how many foxes. I think it was 300 foxes. How can you grab 300 foxes? I can't even grab my dog's tail. 300. 300. Come on, think about the. We read it like, oh, 300 foxes, and he tied him and he put him on fire. Dude, you killed the foxes. I'll go pee down him. Think about it. He was crazy. He was crazy. So he was courageous. He had no problem. He was, had no problem doing all these things. But he lacked character. And eventually he self destructed. If you study his life, you come to realize that his character breakdown, because he had a character breakdown in four little chapters. And we're going to break it down really quickly. It wasn't overnight. Do you know that your reputation can be ruined overnight? Oh, social media. Oh, it's like killing reputations. I mean, if I would care about reputation on social media, I probably would have died already. Because people have their own opinions. Right? But it's the character of God that will keep you. It's the character of God that will sustain you. It's the character of God that will keep you with every promise of God. It's mine and do not let the devil take it from you. After all, even John says that we overcome. We overcome, he says, by what? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of our reputation. In a sense, by the word of our testimony. God is not talking about reputation, about oh, gossip. No, he's talking about do the people see me when you're outside my house? Can they recognize my son when Virginia is out? When she's at home raising her kids, can my kids recognize Jesus in me? Right? Can my family recognize Jesus in me? If they can't recognize you, I uh, recognize Jesus, then that's okay. That's okay because we can always repent. So ask. Don't ask people that always tell you how awesome you are. Go ask someone in your immediate family that you live with and ask, how is my character? And be ready to punch. <laughs> you might not like it. What do you mean? I'm not an angel? Right? So his demise, his breakdown was little by little. He didn't start like, have you ever said to yourself, how did I end up here? I'm so messed up. How did I get here? You know how? Little by little. You know what I call little by little? Those are the great areas. It's great. It's okay. I'm not sinning, and I'm going to show you what he did, what, what Sammy did. It's okay. Uh, uh, 
the beginning, you know, like my husband said, go back to your first love. You know, we started like, hello, we're going to live for Jesus. We're going to represent him. I am the representative of Recomer. We're like crazy, right? I, when you go to work, I will not gossip. I will not partake. I will not do this. And three years later, we're like sitting with them and they're gossiping. It's okay because I'm just going to hear it. I'm not going to say anything. You know what that's called? A great area. You just moved into a great area. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm not sinning because I'm not talking about the people. But you know, the gossip is going to get juicy. And the next day, you're going to, you know, it's because I have to share the gospel. I need to show myself friendly. So I'm going to sit down again. Little by little. And then you're going deeper into darkness. And then all of a sudden, you're the one telling everybody, have you heard? Have you heard about so-and-so? No, we haven't. Oh, let me tell you. Sit down. This is going to be long. Okay, this is juicy. And because I'm a Christian, we're going to pray for this person at the end. That's my character. You don't have to represent Jesus. We just need to, I need you guys to know because I don't want you to be deceived by this per people. No, 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 no. You are deceived, my friend, because you're partaking. You're partaking. At some point, you will never think about speaking about no one. At some point, you never thought about gossiping. At some point, you never thought about doing something that it was inappropriate. At some point, you were like just so in love with Jesus that you were in this area. I am with him and I'm not moving. But little by little, if you make allowances, it will move you into a great area. You know what I call it? You know what I call that, uh, that great area? The 50 Shades of Grey. No, I did not see that movie, so don't send me an email. Many people on social media, we should boycott 50 shades of gray. Da, 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 da. But you're living it. No, I know, but no one knows that God knows that. But I'm not going to be caught up in the movie theater, me watching a movie that is inappropriate because, hey, I represent Jesus. Yeah, but little by little, without knowing your. You're shifting. Little by little, you're moving. You're doing things you would have never done. Da, 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 da. And let me tell you about my friend Sammy. First of all, number six. Read number six, another homework. You have good until next Wednesday. You're like busy every day. This is what it says about a Nazarite. A Nazarite has three things that he has to. This is, if, if you are vow, he means that he was vow. He was his commitment. A vow is a commitment. Marriage is a vow, a commitment. We don't like the word vow, so we use commitment. So his commitment was that he needed to live by these three things. One, never to drink wine. And if this one, dude, I mean, I love, I, you know, Sam, if, I, I feel for him because not only he couldn't drink wine, but he couldn't even be close to a vineyard. He couldn't even eat grapes. He couldn't even have a raisin. I don't like it, but he couldn't have a raisin. Just to know that you can have a raisin, I want a raisin. He couldn't even, he got leaf, you know, those little thingies, Persians that they do and they wrap it in grape leaves. He couldn't eat those things. Think about it. He couldn't. He couldn't even cut a little tweak and, and pick his teeth. No, you can't. Stay away from the vineyard. One. Two. He was never to cut his hair. That was a symbol of God's presence in his life. You're never to cut your hair. And three. He must not go near a dead body. And I want you to read Judges 14. Because when I read it, I'm like, dude, Sammy. You compromise little by little, my friend. Stop blaming Delilah. It wasn't Delilah. You started. This is how he did it. If you read it, this is what he says. Verse Judges 14.5 says, Then Sammy went down with his father and his mother to Timnah. And he turned aside and went into the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, a young lion roared against him. He went to this city because he liked this, this other girl. He had a problem with the ladies. Remember, I told you that. 
we know that. So he goes to this city, and then mom and dad are not in agreement, but he says, this is what I want. He says, this girl really pleases me. That's what he says. So he goes to Timna, and then all of a sudden he says, he turned aside. He went into a great area. He turned aside, and he's going to say, I'm going to go visit the vineyard. What are you doing in a vineyard? Oh, pastor, but I'm not sinning. No, I'm just going to see it. That's how you start. That's how you start. So he's in the vineyard, all right, in a place that he shouldn't be. And then all of a sudden a lion comes and he wants to devour, devour him. You know what to me represent is like when we start going into the, the gray areas, that's when the, the enemy comes. Remember when we bring reproach to heaven, he says, do not open the door to the devil because he's going to come roaring like a lion seeking to devour you. But then the, God is so faithful and he gives him the strength that he kills the lion. And then he says that he went back with his parents. Now they're together again. And he says that he didn't tell his mom and dad. So Sammy, how come you didn't tell your parents? Because he knew that he wasn't supposed to be there. And then you continue to read the chapter. And then he says that after that he went to get the girl. Da, da, da. And then he comes back. He's Now he's coming back because he already asked for this girl to be in marriage. He comes back. And guess where he goes? It says, and he turned aside again, and he went to see the lion. Where was the lion? In the vineyard. One of the things is that he couldn't be close to a dead, doesn't say person or an animal. And what did he do? He probably thought, you know what, it's a lion. It's not a person. I'm not sinning. I'm not supposed to. This is not a man. This is not a woman. It's just a lion. He says, you're not supposed to be around things that are dead. But he justified his great area. And every time he would do that, he says, he turned aside. And then he comes back and he says, and he didn't tell his mom and dad. Hmm. And then he sees that now that carcass of the lion has honey. Not only is he not supposed to touch it and be near it, now he grabs the honey, he eats it, takes it back again to his mom and dad. He was a mom and daddy's boy. They thought that he was good. They thought that, no, my son is, he was a judge. He judged Israel for 20 years, but he lived a double life. He comes, and he's like, mom, here, honey, for you. And the parents are, mom, I got this. Look what I got. Son, where are you working now? Oh, it's just, um, I would become an entrepreneur. I mean, pharmaceuticals. You work for, I don't know, pharmaceutical names. No, this is holistic. This is here, mom. Here, dad. This is what I'm bringing. We're like, okay, son, as long as we bless the money and we give a tithe to the Lord, we're good. You know what it's called? Gray area. So he does that over and over, over and over. He says, he turned aside, he turned aside. And if you read the entire chapter, he says, and he didn't tell his mom and dad. He didn't tell his mom and dad. I'm like, oh, dude. You're in trouble because now you know you're not, you're, this is your repetition. This is what you do. And although it's four chapters, that means that was his lifestyle. <sighs> Tammy. To me, when he went to the vineyard, it's like we will send Superman to a field of kryptonite. No, as long as I don't touch it. No, dude, you're, you, that thing is going to touch you. Sooner or later, if you touch it, it's going to kill you. Sin kills, but we feel no because it's little by little. At the beginning, we, you know, think about when people do their taxes. No, 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 I'm not going to. I have to be integrous. I have to be integrous because I just gave my life to Christ. And three years later, five years later, four years later, whoever, whatever years later, you're like, you know, I'm on a, another dependent. What's the dependent? The Holy Spirit, he lives in my house. <laughs> Who's the dependent? I can't tell you. He's not from this world. Lives inside of me and eats for two. Are you pregnant? No, it's the Holy Spirit. You know what it's called? Gray area. We laugh, but it's a gray area. And then the most scariest verse in the Bible for me to read is that then he gets with, you know, we know he gets with Delilah. And then she, you know, the first wife did him wrong. And now he, he gets another wife and she's even worse. Right, and she's present and present, and she's nagging him. I, we don't know how long they were married, but he says that sometimes she wanted to know. She wanted money, so she was all for money. So they told her, you know what? 
if you give us, if, if you tell us what's his, what's his, what's his secret, we're going to give you 11, I think it's 11,000 pieces of silver. Don't quote me on that. So she wanted money. But then again, she was a prostitute. What do you expect, right? She wasn't, she wasn't a Hebrew woman. She was a Philistine. He did everything that he wasn't supposed to do. But now he says that he, uh, at some point, he says that he was vexed. That means he was agitated because she asked, he says, every day she nagged him, what's your secret? What's your secret? And she tricked him every day and he didn't compute him. I tell you why, because when you live in that gray area, it will blind you. It was like the moment he, she got his hair, it was like, how did I end up here? Dude, you live with that woman and she asked you every day and she trapped you every day and you broke out every day. You got free every day, so it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't her fault. It was your responsibility. You didn't see it. So, but this is, this is the, the one that scares me, Judges 6 and 30. This is, and she said, this is when he finally confesses because she couldn't take it. Oh, poor Sammy, you couldn't take it. He said, and she said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Sammy. So he awoke from his sleep and said, this is what he said. Another version says, and he thought. This is what he thought. I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. I know I've been leaving it off. I know I haven't been in alignment with God. But you know what? He has been faithful to set me free every time. And I did it again. And I still feel good. God's still with me. And I did it again. And I did it again. And have done it all my life. So now he is so convinced that his strength. Hey, I did it before. I set myself free. So it's going to happen. And then this is what breaks my heart. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. He did not know that the Lord had departed from him. It was little by little. Little by little. And it wasn't that God left him because he was a bad God. No, no, no. We walk away from God. Little by little. Little by little. Little by little. You're now in 50 shades of gray. 100 shades of gray. And I'm going to tell you, his demise, his destruction, his ruin, he brought it upon himself because he was born to do great and mighty things and to deliver Israel. I don't believe it would have been that story. Not that God would write it like that. He wrote his story. But the choices he made. And to me, it's like, how come he didn't know? How come he didn't know? How was it? What happened to him? I'm going to tell you what happened. It's because it happened one degree at a time. One degree at a time. One degree at a time. Every day he made the same choices and he was good. He felt good. You know, I'm still gifted. I'm still strong. I still get the women I want or the men I want. You know, whatever he was, his deal. That's what we do. We compromise every single day. We say, he's still good. My family's still good. God's still good. He's still blessing me. Da, 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 da. And we think that, and we are deceiving ourselves. And at the end, what happened to him is that he ended up blind, bound, and he was only good for entertainment. Blind and bound because sin in the, in the great area will blind you. And without knowing, all of a sudden, sin comes to, hey, now it's time for pay me. The devil wants you to work for him, but then he's like, hey, now it's, it's payroll time. He wants to mock your life. But beyond mocking your life, he wants to mock our Jesus' life. He wants to mock his name. And you and I have to make a decision Said, I will not, my life, my family, we will not allow the name of Jesus to be mocked. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.